STS-132 mission, Space Shuttle Atlantis' mission to the International Space Station. Uh, I'm going to give the microphone immediately over to the commander for the STS-132 mission, Ken Ham, and then uh, he'll talk to the crew and we'll entertain questions. Okay, man. Thanks, Alec. I'm going to start with a, uh, an excuse. <laughs> when we flew in here a couple days ago for this, uh, this training period for us at the Cape, we knew that most of you guys, the press, were really tired, and that's because you had just filmed SGS-131 landing that morning, and we were flying in in the afternoon. You guys have been up all day. Now the roles are reversed. You guys have probably been sleeping since then. And we were out here riding the crawler last night. I think we got back to bed maybe 2.33 in the morning, something like that. I'm not sure what time it was. And then uh, we were up at 5.30 this morning. So we're the tired ones, and that's our excuse. Uh, it's kind of interesting. There's been a, a lot of discussion these days about uh, the future of the space program. I'm beating you guys to the punch on all your questions so that you can't ask it. Uh, and I think maybe one of the bottom lines or, or, the, or the main thoughts is that there is uncertainty in the future as we try to figure out how to implement the president's vision, which I'm sure we're going to do. But that leads to uncertainty, and uncertainty is always a little bit scary. However, living in the moment, I think for everybody involved in this business, whether you are an engineer in Houston, an engineer in uh, California, a wrench turner up there on the pad, a press person that's here to cover this kind of event, everybody wanted to be in the space business. And guys, this is what's going on right now. We're launching shuttles, we're landing shuttles, we are shooting a, uh, the X-37 vehicle hopefully this evening. Uh, I believe there is a progress undocking sometime today from Space Station, which is going to free up a port for us to bring up another module to put on that port. So there's an incredible amount of activity going on right now in the space world, and we should all be enjoying it. I can tell you for sure the six of us are. All right, enough about where we are today. Uh, some introductions. Tony Antonelli. Just got selected as a captain in the U.S. Navy. Second space flight for him. He's having a ball. He keeps me from making big, huge mistakes and lets me make the little ones, which is perfect. <laughs> Dr. Garrett Reisman, we call him Big G. Can you tell why? One of our spacewalkers, he is leading uh, EVA number one, MS-2, Colonel in the Air Force, now retired, Mike Good. We call him Bueno because there's a translation there. Another EVA uh, spacewalker, he's going to be leading EVA number three. Uh, moving down the line, MS-3, Steve-O Bowen, Captain, United States Navy. Another spacewalker, so these three guys here in the middle are our uh, fantastic trio of spacewalkers. Steve is leading uh, EVA number two, which is kind of neat. It's rare to have three different uh, lead spacewalkers on one flight. And mo that's mostly due to the fact that all three of these guys have been outside in spacesuits before on different missions, and, uh, and they're fantastic. Lastly down there, Dr. Pierce Sellers. He's sort of our uh, experience on the flight. This will be his third. He is our primary robotics arm operator. He is also our payload commander, being that our primary payload is the MRM-1 module which is a Russian-built module. I think there's really only one of us, of the six, that really understands that module and its peers. So make it happen right, and uh, don't let anything happen to you. Pierce is also our science officer on the crew. So if you guys have any questions about uh, payload science and what's going on, on on the International Space Station, you can ask any one of us, but we're going to turn around and point at Pierce because he's going <laughs> to answer it for us. I think that's all I have. No, I know that's all I have on the way of a, uh, an introduction. And I think we can open it up to questions and answers if you'd like. And I'll stop talking. I have a question for him. Hi, Robert Perlman with uh, CollectSpace.com and Space.com. Uh, given the time that you spent with uh, Atlantis last night and through this morning, uh, what does it mean to each of you to be uh, assigned to the last flight or what is planned to be the last flight of Atlantis? I almost passed the microphone. We figured that question was, was coming, and we've, we've come up with a tagline for you. This is the first 
last flight of Atlantis. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll stop talking. You answer that. That was a great answer. Good job, boss. <laughs> Next question. No, seriously, next question. <laughs> okay, well, if it's, uh, hi, Bill Horowitz, CBS News. I was wondering if I could get the three lead spacewalkers to give us an overview of each of the EVA since we hadn't had the Houston briefings yet, give us a sense of what's happening, and, and not to hog this, but if, if Pierce could give us a little overview of the uh, Russian module, that'd be great, too. Thanks. I would be happy to. Um, the, uh, the, we're doing three EVAs. Uh, the first EVA will be myself and Steve. And uh, we're going to go outside, and, and uh, we, we have, in addition to the Russian module that we're bringing up, we have a new antenna. And that antenna has a uh, large boom and a, and a dish. It comes up in two pieces. And uh, Steve and I will assemble that antenna on the very top of, uh, of the space station. So it's nice for us because then it gives us a good fallback position. In the future, we can install your satellite TV if anybody needs some help with that. We'll be experts at it. Um, so we, we put that antenna together, and then uh, once we complete that, we have a new piece of equipment, an upgrade to uh, the Dexter robot, which is the Canadian robot that we brought up uh, earlier. And uh, it's a new tool platform that will enhance its capabilities uh, to do work outside. So we'll be installing that uh, at the end of that spacewalk. And that's, that concludes uh, the first spacewalk, which will be uh, the, um, on flight day four. And uh, so now I turn it over to talk about the, the second spacewalk to Stevo. On uh, flight day six, we have our second spacewalk, and the second spacewalk is all about batteries. Uh, we'll go out, Mike and I will head out, and we'll go out and prep P6 for the uh, battery change out. And uh, we're going to get hopefully three of them done for sure and keep working until we uh, run out of time. And that should set us up well for the uh, third and final spacewalk. Okay, on the uh, third spacewalk, it'll be back to uh, Garrett and I. We'll finish up the battery task, and uh, these batteries are not double A's. You know, my brother thinks, uh, you know, what's the big deal going out there and doing a couple batteries in space? But these are actually about 400-pound uh, batteries. They're the size of a big, uh, like a big speaker or suitcase, and they're way out there at the end of the uh, P6 truss. It's very similar to what uh, the 127 mission did a few, uh, a few months ago. They, we're just going to be on the other side of the, uh, of the truss. And I'm really looking forward to going out and, uh, and getting that view. Um, and uh, once we finish up with the batteries, uh, we are going to journey back to the uh, shuttle into the payload bay. And uh, we're flying up on the sidewall carrier a uh, grapple fixture. We're actually going to go out, EVA, get it, and bring it back inside with us. Um, and then uh, it'll be used on a... a future uh, spacewalk, they'll take it back out, do some work on it inside, uh, install a bracket, and then they'll take it back outside and install it out on the station, and it'll be a, a point of departure then for uh, future uh, robotic arm operations. And now, science and MRM-1. Yes, I'm the MRM-1 whisperer. Um, <laughs> MRM-1's uh, quite a big payload. It's a Russian uh, module. It's in the back of the shuttle right now, or what? And on flight day five, we'll reach in with the arm, pull it out, and plug it into the bottom of the Russian segment. And what that will give us is a kind of a long tube docking extension so that spacecraft could dock to the ISS without coming close to other structure. And that's the main function. Otherwise, it'll be a place to put things and do some science. Hi, James Dean from Florida today. Another uh, spacewalk question. Um, wondering what the possibility is, do you think, for uh, having a, a nitrogen tank removal uh, added onto your list of work? And um, also, we learned from the last mission that there was this possible shock hazard out at the end of P6. And so how are you guys handling that, and how much of a concern is that uh, as you go out there for the first time knowing about this, this new issue? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, well, you've been following along pretty closely. I'm <laughs> that's very impressive. Um, the, uh, the, for the nitrogen tank, uh, that's something that we've been following very closely. Uh, we followed the developments uh, on the last mission. Uh, currently, there are no plans for us to uh, go out and work on that tank uh, during this mission. Uh, the program has uh, said that they are happy operating it for an extended period of time without doing a changeout. However, uh, we uh, did 
uh, it, this is NASA, so we always have backup plans to our backup plans. And so we did the other day, uh, while we were doing some work in our big pool where we practice spacewalks, uh, take a look at that, and we'll be ready to perform any.